Welcome to Ghoulfish on Games. One of the things I loved about computer games is that it is generally easier to create your own content for them. And many developers actually included tools in the installation, or at least on the CD, that allowed you to create your own levels, or your own artwork, or many different types of content. One of those games was Command & Conquer Red Alert. In the default installation, they gave you both the Windows and DOS version of an editor. You got Edwin and DOS, uh, Ed DOS. And they both would launch into pretty much the same editor, but the resolution was slightly different. And it's amazing that this can still be found in the installations that you can get on Origin and off the 10th anniversary DVD edition. But you will run into a problem that it will actually ask for the original CD to be in the drive. Why it's got a CD check? I don't know. I doubt at this point anyone really knows. It's probably one of those things lost in time. So let's start up the Windows version because we're in Windows 95 at the moment. And in true Westward fashion, we get quite a unique launch splash screen. Anyone that's played a game of Command and Conquer should recognize this UI. It is very much based on the classic in-game systems. I'm probably using the same UI tech. So let's take a quick look at the options. And if we select new game, we can change the different map sizes and we can change between the two different tile sets. This instantly shows us this was not the editor used to make the game, as the map sizes are way too small and there were more than two tile sets for the main game. So at this point I don't know whether or not they made a cut down version of their usual editor or if they made something custom just for us users. Either way, it's nice they still gave us this option. When I create a level, I try to have a general idea in mind of what I'm going to be doing. And in this one, I've decided I'm going to try and cut the level in half and have a river running through it. We edit levels by pasting down tiles. We have a basic set of grass and water tiles, and then we have more complex tiles for everything else. After pasting down the rough sort of outlines of the water, we can then go into the selection screen and select the various different tiles that we've got for laying down shores. Unfortunately there's no way of flipping or rotating these tile sets around so you have to deal with what you've got but you can paste them on top of each other in weird and interesting ways. Sometimes these works out, sometimes they don't. Quite often you'll end up having to redesign a small area so it'll match up with the type of tiles that you have to hand. This does at times feel a little limiting but you can create some really interesting designs out of the, these basic sets and you can paste them on top of each other in interesting ways. It's now time to start tackling the river. These are placed as tiles as anything else in the game, but has a few extra special ones such as bridges that you can place down where you feel they're necessary. In this instance I've just used the typical sort of muddy crossings as my water areas aren't large enough to really accommodate the proper bridges. Plus, you can destroy the bridges and thus get yourself stuck in a weird situation and end up having to rely solely on aircraft. The other side of the river plays out exactly the same as the first side, with us placing shores and trying to make it look more natural. I tried to mess around with some of the rock sets, but these are far more limited than the sandy shores and meant that I couldn't properly join the rivers up with what I was wanting to do here, so I had to change my plans. As you can see, started to place down river sets and then had to work my way backwards through the different tile sets to try and get back to a nice sandy shore. These are the type of things that you'll hit across when you have a limited set of tiles to work with. Sometimes you can get away with it, other times you can't. One of the big problems is trying to make sure you don't use the same set of tiles too often or it all looks a bit repetitive. You also have to make sure you don't leave any garbage around afterwards as well so you end up having to go back and either put down the water or the grass textures in to make sure that it looks nice and not like there's something missing. Interestingly this gives us a hint at how the engine itself works as it's obviously a tile engine that has at minimum two layers. At the moment we're working on the lowest of the layers in which we're placing the basics of the level. We will see later when I start to put down ore that there has to be at least another layer on top of that. 
Now, with this river just about completed, it's time to start thinking about something else. And this time, it's going to be roads. So, roads act like any other tile that we've worked with so far. There is a very limited number of them, but they do some slightly different things where we have angled pieces, which we can see are mostly just regular pieces that we just paste in a slightly different way. And annoyingly, when you hit the top of the screen, it's very difficult to then try and get it to go off the top. You can't quite get the mouse up there. But we've got some lovely sort of cross pieces and branching and stuff, so we can create some interesting looking roads. I like placing roads down just because it gives a nice sort of idea to the gamer where the bases might be and give them something to travel along. In this instance, I'm more using it as a decoration piece for the level more than anything else. One thing that the level editor also supports is dragging pieces. It creates this weird sort of smearing effect, which can be quite interesting, but sometimes it looks a bit weird. I've decided that much of the ore is going to be contained within a rocky, mountainous area with a single entrance on both sides. This means that there's a natural bottleneck. This means there's some natural protection against quick attacks against Harvester. But if you do allow enemies into that area, you're gonna have a difficult time of trying to get them out again. As we can see, ridges are no different from any other tile set that we've worked with so far. Just drop them in and make sure they look like they're linking together. With this area done, it's time to add some ore. And this is literally done by just pasting it down. It just goes on top of whatever you've got there at the moment. And same with the gems, they just basically go on top. Now you also need to place these flags to say where the players will start. In this instance, I'm only using a couple of players. And we can see how these were a second layer on top of the level design that we've done so far. As it pastes on top of it and we can see through to what's underneath. Now you might notice at the top of the screen, we can see how much money I've placed in ore in the level so far. It's about 105,000 credits. I keep this number in mind when I go and put the ore for the second player down, as I want to make sure they got roughly equal amounts of money. So I want to get somewhere in the regions of 200,000 credits, as we don't want to give one player an unfair advantage over the other. Finally, we can start placing trees and other debris into the level. This gives it a bit more character, makes it feel a bit more alive, and also allows you to control where people can place buildings and where units can go as well, as these things cannot be passed. There are also a number of debris and other items that you can place down in the level to give it more character. These can be found under the debris menu, and oops, found a bit of area that I missed out on when I was placing down the ore. It's quite easy to do with some of the level at times also decided to put a whole bunch of gems at the choke point to force an interaction between players. With the bulk of the level done, it's time to enable Passable. This shows us where tanks can and cannot go. As we can see, it's only the ground vehicles, as water units would be able to fit in the areas I made, and flying units would just go over everything anyway. And after a quick look around, everything looks correct. With the level being in a pretty decent state, I think it's time to show off what it would look like if we switch to the snow tile set. Now after selecting it through the modified map menu and it loads up the tile set from the CD, we can see the level itself looks pretty much identical. It's now just mostly white instead of mostly green. Now I have to admit, I think this level looked better under the green tile set so we'll switch back to that. And done. Well, I think we're pretty much there to give it a go, so let's save this out. And seeing that we're doing this for a video, let's call this map uh, Video Killed the Radio Star. Why not? Now we can just quit out of the editor and load into Command and Conquer itself. Ah, oh, I love this logo so much and all the sounds and everything that go along with it. Probably the easiest way to test out this level is through a skirmish. This allows you to play against bots, and while they're not particularly clever, they are quite fun to play against. So select skirmish, and our map should show up pretty much at the bottom of this huge list. And there we go. And yeah, the names and everything looks correct, and let's go. 
and uh, it looks like we're in the bottom left hand corner. We didn't show up where we put the flag, which means I probably missed the flag for this coloured player. Uh, so this is something I'll obviously have to go back and fix. But thankfully the engine doesn't penalise us for missing out that flag. It just means we're not in control of where the player starts. So we could actually leave it like it is, or we can go back into the editor and actually place flags exactly where we want the players to start. It's up to us really. And I'm not sure why I'm exploring the level, so I already know what it looks like, but it's fun to do so anyway. And there we have it! From beginning to end it took about 25 minutes, which isn't too bad for a quick level. Now it's probably not balanced, but we can prove that out through playtesting. And if you want to playtest it, or any of the other levels I made when I messed around with this back as a kid, you can find links in the description. And if you're interested in more games and more titles that had level editors and content creation tools, do all the usual likes, subscribes, bells, whistles, all that jazz. And I'll see you next time, as I've been the Goldfish, that was the Command & Conquer Scenario Editor, and this was Goldfish on Games. And if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get back to playing some more of this level.